no more. Oh, my Lord. We won't have to cry no more. I tell you, we won't, church. We won't have to cry no more. Welcome to another segment of KISS. That is, keep it simple, sir. Keep it simple, Senorita. Keep it simple, saints of God. It's a blessing to come into your home again. And we have a great program for you today. A great program that's right amongst us. So many seeds are different ones walking in our community, doing certain things, dressed a certain way. But we endeavor to let us understand the behind the scenes and some of the community outreaches right here in our city throughout the state and actually throughout the country. country. Mm -hmm. And even though we have local fellowship, they are na nationwide, is that correct? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we have great guests with us today. I decided to take a Bible scripture, if I would, from uh, Romans 8 and 28, which we will read in a little bit. But I would like for our guests to introduce themselves Starting with Dr. Johnson here, directly across from me. And also, uh, dear brother Marlon Shackerford, <laughs> in their own way to introduce themselves to you today before we get started. God bless. Good evening. My name is Floyd Johnson. I'm honored to be a guest. I thank you for this invitation, Bishop Norton. And we will discuss everything from the upcoming dynamic cultural festival slated for August 21 through biblical passages today. Thank you. Oh, praise God. Comedic sign for peace. Peace means oneness. It's important that we have oneness in every conversation that we have. If we're talking about growing our community. You, you grow your community in order to grow others. And my name is Martin Shackelford and I feel real good. That's <laughs> sort of my national anthem to help me deal with psychic violence <laughs> and to teach young people to feel real good about everything about them. African features just got to feel real good. <laughs> <laughs> Praise God. And either one of you told us how to get in touch with you. Oh. Okay. How the public may want to. All right. <laughs> As I said, my name is Floyd, F-L-O-Y Johnson. I can be reached at area code 937-580-0044 or my email, floydjohnson at yahoo.com. Okay. Marlon Shackelford, my number is 937-475-2707. My email, this is one word, peaceambassadorsdayton at gmail.com. Don't forget the S in ambassadors. <laughs> All right. Praise God. That means representation. Yes. <laughs> yes. Collective. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, indeed. Mm -hmm. Now, there's a lot of things that both of you are involved in our community. I guess that's why we have it as community outreach. Mm -hmm. Outreach, in reach, but we are reaching mm -hmm. to bring th those together, as you mentioned, in the oneness. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I, I thank God because I know even in our young mm -hmm. life, we often heard together we stand, divided we fall. Mm -hmm. yes. Which has been a good saying, we repeat it, but mm -hmm. this is something we have to bring into our daily activity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Being able to think daily this mm -hmm. way. It's just not like on a page of the book and just, yeah, we read it. Mm -hmm. yeah. And they used to say, go in, go in one ear and the you know, old books, they go in one ear and come out the yeah. other ear. Mm -hmm. But we wanted to stop there and become a part of us in our life. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't know, it's so much about the two of you and there's so many things that you're doing in the community. I don't want to miss out on none of the good things that you're going to share with us. Uh, I know the Black Culture Fest, uh, we don't usually give dates that is coming up, but because, unless it's annual, and this is something, an this annual is event. An yes. event. Yes. And there are quite a few people that attend mm -hmm. the Black Cultural Fest but don't even know much <laughs> about it <laughs> other mm -hmm. than it's entertainment, they got African clothes on, and, and blah, 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 and a lot to eat and just enjoy. But it's more to it oh, yes. Yes. that brought it together. Mm -hmm. And since we have the president here, Oh, that's what I am. <laughs> I'm the president. <laughs> I'm the president. 
<laughs> well, I <laughs> quoted the president. I'm the president. <laughs> I'm the president. <laughs> <laughs> Just being kidding. Mm -hmm. So if there's any information that we need to find mm -hmm. out, you are here to be able to share that. Mm -hmm. And as well as that, you elder, you've been here many years in the cultural fest mm -hmm. and blessed us even to partake in the last few years. Mm -hmm. But coming from not the horse's mouth, mm -hmm. But from the man, <laughs> <laughs> the president, and I know you have so many things you're going to share about the Dayton Elders Council. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of time people hear about the Dayton Elders Council, but yeah. you can share something with us today, a little background. Okay. But you've understand it's all about networking and understanding right. what's taking place in our community. There's no reason the amount of years that we've been here the people yet void of knowing mm -hmm. what it's all about. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I'm um, like the elders council and the builders. Yeah, the nation builders. You got the nation builders. The warriors. The warriors. The warriors pre warriors. All pre warriors. Watotos. All of these things mm -hmm. is a part of our community. Mm -hmm. Yes. It's more than dressing in African attire and so forth. Mm -hmm. But I think I'll take a break and let you guys start. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And share with me a little bit more about. Okay. Yeah. Well, to start off with the Dayton African American Culture Festival, it used to be called the Black Culture Festival. Okay. And it was started in 1968. Okay. That was a few years old. <laughs> 1968. We are older than the Black Indianapolis, Indianapolis Expo. Okay. We're older. We're older. They started in 1970. We started in 1968. You can go back with names like Bean and Queen Mother, Margaret Peters, uh -huh. and Mama Nazipo. I can go down that list. Litany of, of, of living legends. Uh -huh. uh, and I like to say African living legends. Uh -huh. So they really paved the way. So we've been doing this thing for a while yes. right here in Dayton, Ohio. And in the Midwest, when they talk about culture festivals, one of the oldest and one of the best, I think, is Dayton African American Culture Festival because of the creativity, which is cool, but one of the principles. Mm -hmm. And so you go back to 1968. And even though our elders council is it's, it's only, what, six or seven years old, but if you go back, they had an elders council back then uh -huh. because the elders are walking libraries. Mm -hmm. And when it, it's a proper to say when an elder dies, a library burns. Mm -hmm. And I heard something else the other say that the youth may walk faster, but the elders know the path. Yeah. And so that's why this Dayton African American Culture Festival, the elders council, the Watoto the children, the pre-warriors and the nation builders are so important. Now, when I became... Uh, president, I just saw the need for the Elders Council mm -hmm. because I said even though we had the Dayton African American Culture Festival, that's the reactive side. What is the proactive side? What is the side that's going to make a difference in the community? Because if you got outreach, you inverse the word to say reach out. Uh -huh. How are we going to reach out to this community other than two or three days a year? Mm -hmm. So I felt that if we had an elders council, right, and then nation builders, that's really my age, mm -hmm. y'all are the elders, mm -hmm. is that we could really have an impact and an imprint on this city. Okay. You know, I mean, we really could, yeah. even dealing with economic power, political power, educational power. And so that's why the Elders Council is so important. So that makes the Culture Festival just as important because what happens in the Culture Festival, what, two years ago, for both days, we had like 12,000 people came in and out. Mm -hmm. So that's 12,000 people that we had an opportunity to plant a seed there for African growth. And a lot of people get confused when we say African. Mm -hmm. We're not saying that we live in Africa. Mm -hmm. We're saying that Africa is inside of us. Mm -hmm. And so I want to free the African in me. It's saying I want to free the African, the mother of civilization, mother earth. I want to free them hotel. I want to free, you can go down like Queen, Queen Sheba. I want to free them inside of me. Mm -hmm. Not that I do as much as they do, but I make them proud by doing more. And so when you see a culture festival that a lot of people think it's just, oh, it's just an event. But no, the Jewish community, and I participate every year, they have the Bar Mitzvah, which yes. is a rites of passage. Uh -huh. And they live and die by the Bar Mitzvah. Mm -hmm. I mean, they live and die. We have our own rites of passage. When you watch Roots or if you watch uh, Mandela, the movie Mandela, they started mm -hmm. with rites of passage. Mm -hmm. So what's happening with the Elders Council is the rites of passage. The elders are passing it to the nation builders. Yes. The nation builders are 
are passing to the warriors. The warriors are passing to the pre-warriors, and the pre-warriors are passing to the children, which are the Watotos. But being I'm a ghetto Christian, <laughs> I must say, when I say ghetto, I'm thinking about Tupac when he said, getting higher education to teach others. Uh -huh. My mother, who raised 64 foster kids and mentored over 1,000 women, taught us that as a kid, right? The ghetto is just meaning that my ministry uh -huh. is rooted in our neighborhood. Okay. And so being at our men, that's why I come to the ghetto Christian. But <laughs> being rooted inside of a neighborhood means I first then have a responsibility to, responsibility means mm -hmm. to respond to my ability, the ability to respond. The greatest ability is responsibility. I have a responsibility to give all of me back to the community. I can't hold nothing. I have to give all of me because they need to be better than me. Mm -hmm. We're one of the only, and I shut up about this. We're one of the only ethnic groups that don't teach our kids to be better. Uh -huh. But you know, in our days, our mama told us you had to be two times better. I'm saying you got to be 10 times better. <laughs> I'm saying 110% ain't enough now. Right. We got to give 125% yeah. to make our community, it, it's so important, safety, healing, liberation, and justice. Mm -hmm. Those are the four principles I live off. Safety, uh -huh. healing, liberation, and justice. Yes. Okay. Those are the principles. And in order to do that, I just felt that we needed to take Dayton African American Culture Festival to another level. Okay. Okay. And some of those things you are having planning to the next level you are referring to. Mm -hmm. Well, one of the things is that when you talk about the Culture Festival, you're talking about art, health and education. I'm gonna say them the big three. Mm -hmm. And you balance them three off with the fourth uh, wheel on the wagon, which is our unity. Mm -hmm. And so one of the biggest things is operational unity. Okay. Unify and uplift mm -hmm. by any means necessary. Mm -hmm. That we've got to unify and we've got to uplift others. And so one of the things that when I think about the festival is I think about operational unity. Right, we have to have operational unity. Unity broke down me, you and I. Yeah. Right, and so so it, common sense becomes a big part of that. Okay. Common sense is correct is directed at common unity. So mm -hmm. it's common to love each other. It's common to respect each other. It's common to listen to each other. Okay. It's common to have common courtesy. It's common to say I love you. I need you. I'm here to help you. Mm -hmm. And so operational unity covers all of that. Mm -hmm. John, like a moral behavior we was raised in. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. yes, yes, mm -hmm. yes. And see, we got too many people living by the third commandments instead of the 10 commandments. All right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right, third yeah. commandments, I gotta get my respect with it by any means, you know, that's the third commandment, what are you talking about? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, and so we have to bring the 10 commandments back to the center. Mm -hmm. And then that's what I see the Culture Festival doing. I see it saying, we're gonna invite everybody in yeah. mm -hmm. and we're gonna come to a common ground and that common ground is we need each other. Oh, yeah. Ubuntu, mm -hmm. I am because we are. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. And I know a lot of times those that never been there, not only do we have a lot of African Americans, we have a lot of Africans from different parts That's of right. Africa. That's right. Yes. From different countries in Africa. That's yes. right. So That's it's right. not it's not take away a lot of the guesswork mm -hmm. on what your heritage is because even today, heritage mm -hmm. today was taking place mm -hmm. on the continent of Africa. Mm -hmm. And when I was in Europe, I mean, I was surprised at the time those years ago, but uh, mm -hmm. how many that American Afro-Americans did not realize Africa is not a country. It's a continent. It's a continent. <laughs> it's a continent. <laughs> and so many of African brothers were upset. Why do they think we are a country? Mm -hmm. They are a mm -hmm. continent mm -hmm. with many of countries. 54, mm -hmm. I think. Diverse, 54, mm -hmm. a diversity mm -hmm. of language mm -hmm. and culture. Mm -hmm. And so large, the continent of Africa could set the entire United States, India, I think it's Asia, mm -hmm. and a couple of other continents mm -hmm. on the vastness of space. Yeah, with us, I think we're the second largest continent, Asia first, and then Africa is second. Okay. Mm -hmm. I think 1.4 mm -hmm. billion people. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. 
And so a lot of people don't talk about that. And then when they, so when you see their map, they uncut each of them, <laughs> move it over here. Like they're playing Monopoly. You over here, you over here. No, that's all Africa, baby. Yeah. Yeah. That's all Africa. It's all the continent you know, of Africa. I mean, you talk yeah. about the ground. The, you know, one of the things I teach young people, and it's done in rhythm, I teach them iron, copper, silver, gold, diamonds, rubies, oil, rubber. All of it comes from Africa. It comes mm. from the ground. All right. And they start to get it because the African lives inside of us. Uh -huh. And we, you know, I tell young people that either you pull the king out of you or the king pen. Uh -huh. And by pulling the king, you're bringing the kings out. Imhotep, the first multi-genius. You're bringing those kings out. Okay. And that's what we have to do. And that's what we have to teach even here in America how to pull the king out. That's yeah. why rights of passage is so important. Yeah. That's why conversations like this are mm -hmm. so important. Yes. That's why our history, our culture, our origin are so important. Yes. We must teach. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, yes. Reach one, teach one. Yes. In addition to that, you gentlemen were saying how large the continent of Africa is. Mm -hmm. And I asked Marlon to bring these three symbols. Uh -huh. These are all Nigerian. What this means is welcome. The first one is from the Western tribe of Nigeria, Yoruba. The second one, all of these, as I said, are Nigerian. The second one is Uza, from the Northern tribe, okay. again, Nigerian. And the third one, last but not least, is Igbo from the Eastern Tribe. Mm -hmm. Again, mm -hmm. these are all from just one country, but three different tribes yes. in the motherland. Yes. In addition to that, I brought, just to show a contrast, like this one, this one is from Kenya. Okay. A lot of Kenyan art, I've noticed over the years, is painted. Uh -huh. I remember both of you, if I'm not mistaken, selected an African walking cane from me. Mm -hmm. Both of those came mm -hmm. from Kenya, Africa. Uh -huh. Africa is known for giraffes, elephants, etc. I haven't been to the motherland yet, but that is on my bucket list. <laughs> I intend to get there. Where would we be without music? This is our roots. Uh -huh. Even from the times the slave ships came over to capture mm -hmm. us, uh -huh. what was going on? Yeah. Drumming. Drum. Drumming is a part of us. Yes. Mm -hmm. We will see drummers at the festival. We possibly will see the stilt man mm -hmm. walking. Yes. We mm -hmm. will have all kinds of music. Marlon can elaborate more on the types of music. We will go from cultural music to oh. hip hop. But if you care to elaborate, Marlon. Jazz. <laughs> That's right. Reggae. Tommy Orange runs our big stage. Mm -hmm. And believe me, the flexibility on that stage, of course, gospel. Oh, yeah, Sunday, yeah, yeah, like yes, gospel. yes, <laughs> yes. all day. I mean, yes. he, he tries to cover every range of yes. music. Mm -hmm. yes. And that's mm -hmm. why it's so important. Because let me tell you, I'm a, a bishop, I'm gonna tell you, a lot of people don't know that we invented <laughs> all of these different music yeah. genres. They don't, they really, really don't know. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I had a young man tell me the other day, he was talking about uh, pop. And he was like, well, you know, Elvis Presley was in the, I said, no, <laughs> no. And, and, and that's why history is so important. Mm -hmm. yeah. And not just history, but our history, yes. our story. Uh -huh. We have to tell our story because what we've done is a horrible job in telling our story. We can tell everybody else's story, mm -hmm. but we can't tell our story. Yes. And we have to know that it didn't start doing slavery. Uh -huh. I mean, we were kings, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And if nobody talks about Ethiopia, yeah. uh -huh. I mean, if nobody talks about Egypt yeah. and don't really say, look, this happened then, then we're always gonna be in trouble. Yeah. If you don't know your history, Somebody said that you you will repeat it, and I'm seeing a lot of that yes. because we don't know who we are. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. And you know that's interesting, instead, how that people seem to think that Egypt is separate mm -hmm. from Africa. Mm -hmm. It's a part. It is the mm -hmm. continent of Africa. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and if you do any other studies beyond 500 years ago, because mm -hmm. a lot of time we go back to the Romans and we stop. Maybe mm -hmm. the Persians, maybe the Medes, but wait a minute. That's not what a bureau mm -hmm. began or end. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. It's so much more. I remember reading something that uh, someone from Rome that had made a tour to the continent and his writings that he wrote what he observed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it observed what he observed from the top of the continent 
all the way down to his mm -hmm. description of the people there. Mm -hmm. But today we think, well, there's been a lot of occupation. There have been a lot of countries go in and take and settle and whatever, you know, just like America. America wasn't discovered. There were people that were living here. <laughs> That's right. There were tribes here. That's right. And the funny thing, I don't know if I should share it, but here I might as well as a platform to share. Mm -hmm. <laughs> to show you how information and knowledge is. How many years that we looked at the people who were here before Columbus got here and referred to them as Indians? Mm -hmm. Actually, the history part of it, Columbus was trying to go to India <laughs> and the Spaniards had funded his boys because India was a spice headquarters of the world. He was going to get a shipload of spices. But he was looking for a shortcut. Mm -hmm. And when he come upon what we call America today, he said, I found a shortcut to India. <laughs> Those must be Indians. Mm -hmm. It's stuck. Mm -hmm. Now that more people are coming to knowledge, we're saying, oh, those are Native Americans. Because were they Indian? Mm -hmm. That's how sometimes you say fake news gets started. We mm -hmm. hold on to it. We embrace it. And sometimes we're yet ignorant mm -hmm. of who those mm -hmm. people were. Mm -hmm. Some of our comedians would laugh at Red Fox. He would say, they were the same people. You call them a Mexican, they say, we're going to smoke this and lay here. And the other one said, we're going to smoke this and ride out on the plane. <laughs> No, no, I mean, that, you, you, uh, we're laughing, but you're, you're absolutely right. And that's what I tell young people, with a lot of young people, I tell them, you got to bring, there's a scholar that lives on the inside of you, yeah. and you have to bring that scholar out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You have to bring it. I mean, you have to bring that scholar out of you. Mm -hmm. that's, that's the real scholarship. And a real scholarship talks about your culture, because what I say, you either got culture, or the first uh, four letters in that word is cult, or you got a cult. Mm -hmm. You got to, your culture is your immune system. Mm -hmm. I know, I remember when, when Black Panther uh, came, of course, you know, I love Wakanda Fever. I love mm -hmm. Wakanda Fever, right? <laughs> but a young man named Frederick Cox said something was so powerful to me. Mm -hmm. He said, our vibranium is our unity. Okay. I've never forgot that. Mm -hmm. And for me, I said, oh, yeah, because our culture is our immune system. Uh -huh. So our unity, that goes back to that operational unity. Uh -huh. And I'm fortunate to work in other cities with other elder councils, like I'm doing some stuff. Um, in Oakland, which is probably the blackest city mm -hmm. in the United States, hands down. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm doing some stuff in Atlanta. I'm doing some stuff in Milwaukee. And I'm just listening, yes. listening as a nation builder and learning from them. And <coughs> what's good about it is this big circle is developing. Circle meaning community. Uh -huh. You know, you know, this community is developing where people are starting to say, look, we've got to operate within this community. Mm -hmm. Whether it's talking about the Guns of Salvador, the Black Value System, which that people call Kwanzaa. But we've got to w operate in that circle mm -hmm. if we want to expand the circle. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Now, if you want to drown in the circle, keep thinking inside of a box. Mm -hmm. You know, I tell young people, I said, either you fit out or you fit in. Uh -huh. Do you want to fit in a box or you want to fit out? So what does that mean by fitting out? Fitting out means you think outside of the box mm -hmm. into something. You think outside of the box into a circle yeah. because the circle represents community. The circle is perpetual. Yeah. So we have to become circle thinkers. Mm -hmm. We got to think community. And that's what mm -hmm. I watched my mother do with, with the foster kids. Black, white, it didn't matter the color mm -hmm. to her. Mm -hmm. I watched her make them think. Yes. She, mm -hmm. she, she preferenced thinking. Mm -hmm. My mother used to tell us, think. I, funny thing, you know, back in the day when the Jehovah Witness used to come, we would run <laughs> and hide. <laughs> my mama, mm -hmm. I used to say, she crazy. Mm -hmm. My mama would wait for the Jehovah Witnesses to come and would open the door and they would hug and embrace and the debate would start. And I was like, okay, what's going on here? My mother, and they said, oh, man, they would just sit there and her and several of them Joel with us became friends. So I remember being young, I said, mama, mama, ooh, mama, don't hit me. Cause you know you couldn't talk back, man. Oh yeah. I said, but you hypocrite, mama. She said, what? Yeah. She said, they said Jehovah Witness. They don't. They don't even like Jesus. You know, I ain't know what I was talking about. I just yeah. I said, my mother. My mother said, but they're humans. Yes. 
took me years to get it. Yes. She said, I love them because they're all God's people. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. I know what I believe, Marlon. That's yes. why you do the research for yourself. Mm -hmm. yes. But they're God's people. Yes. God's people deserve to be respected. Yes. That's yes. right. God's people deserve to be loved. They yes. deserve to be listened to. Yes. I'm not God, Marlon. Mm -hmm. I know you think I am. <laughs> I said, no, nah, I'm my own. Thank you, God. You know. <laughs> she said, I might be a goddess. <laughs> listen, <laughs> Bishop, I got to say, you love this, Bishop. My pastor, and I've had great, great pastors. Uh, uh, my pastor, past, one of my pastors, used to say amen. Uh, my mama came from the back of the church and said a woman. <laughs> and my mama told the pastor, mama was, was this God, it had to be God is. We had to have a balance somewhere in here. I used to get so tickled. He used to say, Miss Turner, could you go to the back of the church? I'm about to finish the prayer. She said, hey, woman, I might as well stay right here. But that's what people don't know about yeah, yeah. Africa, yes. how it was a balance. Yes, yes, you yes. have king, you have queen. queen. Yes. So if we would have made it well up to the day, we have hero, shero, uh -huh. superhero, super shero, uh -huh. right? I, one of the things I came up with, mentor, you had to have one mentor. Uh -huh. Women don't have to be mentors. Uh -huh. <laughs> the first, the first woman tour was a woman anyway. I mean, I'm just saying <laughs> what the archaeologists and anthropologists said, the oldest bone they found was of a black woman. Now, I'm, that's what they said. Yeah. You know, they're the scholars, yeah. right? But but it's, it's that serious. Uh -huh. and, and to get our community back to that spirit, mm -hmm. right? You know, that spirit. And so when you talk about going back to the culture festival, those three areas is art, health, and education. Mm -hmm. So we have an art, I can't even think of the name. Mm, what is the, well, we, we have a bunch of artists, local artists come, they got mm -hmm. the name, I can't even think of the name right now. Yeah. Simeon right, huh? is very Simeon involved one, with that. Several of them. Oh yeah, yeah. Bing, Bing, uh -huh. Bing Davis. Yeah. They're a part. Yeah. And, and they're if noted artists. Might be saying, yes, um, African. Yeah. I'm, I'm sorry. Young, That's right. don't uh, anyway, <laughs> it, it's African yeah. people of color united promoting their art. Yeah. Work. Yes. yes. And, and, so, and I believe Simeon was a part of that yeah, at Simeon, Central mm -hmm. State last year up when they had their display. And then we do a health pavilion. Mm -hmm. Yes. Speaking we of health. We talk about mental health. I would like to mm -hmm. uh, give a shout out to my water system, Kagan Water. How many of you want to be healthy? Is mm -hmm. your health important? Well, if it is, you need to stop drinking faucet water, for one. And even some of these bottled waters yes. are unhealthy. You don't know what they're putting mm -hmm. in that water, yes. okay? We, this is our card. We promote a system that filters your tap water. It produces ionized alkaline and acidic waters through electrolysis. If you want to be healthy, reach out and call either one of us. Mm -hmm. This is how I met Bishop. We were, he was doing a Kangen water presentation. Yes, yes. You can lose weight from this. We were taught in training that this can circumvent cancer. Mm -hmm. That's another reason I invested in the system. Yes. I don't ever want to go through that again. <laughs> mm -hmm. Reach out to yes. either Bishop Norton or myself mm -hmm. because we would be more than happy to set up another health water presentation mm -hmm. so that you can experience yes. longevity. Yes, yes, yes. And that's something probably needs to happen at the culture festival. We yeah. had well, a display, but, but I, uh, yeah, uh, Marlon. Yeah. Yeah. Bishop was yeah. there and his okay. wife. Yeah. Because one of the things that we do is we have over 30 health providers mm -hmm. that's right. that come. Okay. And you know, so you got the art. I think it's mm -hmm. AVAC. I know they look mm -hmm. like Shaq going mm -hmm. in. And then you got health and then you got education. Mm -hmm. We had over 40 vendors that came okay. talking about education. Yes. Of course, we support HBCUs, mm -hmm. right? And so the opportunity is the culture fest. I'm going to take bishops in. Uh, men, we are men and women of God. Mm -hmm. I look at the culture festival like a revival. Okay. Mm -hmm. You know, you got a revival once mm -hmm. a year. Yeah. You mm -hmm. take them seven days, mm -hmm. yeah. right? Yeah. And after them seven Seven days, you built for the what next? That's right. <laughs> 50, that's 50, right. You know, fifty-one weeks or whatever. Mm -hmm. But I, I, that's the way I look at it, and that's yes. why it's so important. Yes. Well, we can come, and this is the big one, and be ourselves. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. We don't have to come and act like nobody else. I, mean, I really learned something from the Bar Mitchell, mm -hmm. the Jewish community, when I went. When don't, not only were they saying never again, uh -huh. they were saying know your history at all costs, because okay. dreams cost. Yes. Oh yes. Oh yes. And we'll never be in uh, c camps again. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, this is the way that yes. the way, way that they mm -hmm. are teaching the young people. Yes. So that's why it's just so important yes. to understand that we need to. But 
pyramids man know thyself uh -huh. right we need to know who we are mm -hmm. if we're going to fight racism sexism mm -hmm. adultism heterosexism mm -hmm. warism poorism all the isms yes. we have to know who we are mm -hmm. and then we have to come together that's Ubuntu. right we have to we have to unify mm -hmm. quit quit worrying about well, he got it <laughs> One thing I say about Dayton, I, I tell a lot of people, I say, Dayton got a lot of decorated mess going on. Mm. Y'all you know, look around Dayton, this person fighting with the, this person mad, this person don't want to smile, this person angry at the world. And I'm going in, and then we come on talking about black power. <laughs> I, 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 get, I get so, I see so confused. What power are y'all really talking about yeah. when y'all can't even work together, yeah. when y'all not willing to sit? at the table uh -huh. and have a real conversation, mm -hmm. hug each squad and so we gotta hug each other mm -hmm. in order to bear hug the community. Yes. Mm -hmm. So if the leaders are not willing to hug each other, yes. if the leaders are not willing to have real dialogue and conversation, uh -huh. we're gonna stay stuck. Yes. And this is where our Christian perspective mm -hmm. coming, the narrative when it becomes Christian, we know mm -hmm. Christians mean men Christ like. Yes. And so what would Jesus do, uh -huh. right? And so for me, I take that attitude is that, yeah, even though I'm, Bishop, I might not be feeling you, my spirit, um, <laughs> but if you're doing the work of yes. Christ, yes. Mm -hmm. if you are no limit soldier for Christ, yes. mm -hmm. I work with you because yes. it ain't about me. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the hardest thing that I'm seeing happen in our community. Yes. Everybody wants to shine, but nobody want to grind. Yeah. All right. All right. Don't nobody yeah. bitch really want to grind, but everybody yes. wants to shine because grind mean you work hard. Yes. yes. You you have to work hard. Yes. Shine mean you work smart, but you first got to work hard before yes. you work smart. Yes. And so I think that we got to start having real conversations and real dialogues like this, mm -hmm. really holding Christians responsible for yes. a lot of this because we're not willing. You know, it's like you got church in walls, like you were saying early. Yes. It's also church without walls. Yes. Mm -hmm. And what I love about my church, Omega Baptist Church, Reverend, uh, Reverend Joshua Ward, yes. right, is that we, we try to be a church without walls where yeah. we take the take the ministry take the message to the community that's the real messaging when i knock on your door uh -huh. i saw some young brothers they told me don't say their name and i won't <laughs> from central state about six young brothers uh -huh. the other day i'm trying to think tuesday night i happened to be t dropping a young man uh off and I saw these young brothers knocking on the door. I'm like, what they doing? They're not going to do a gunny door. I said, what y'all brothers doing? He said, man, don't put, the, don't put the camera on us. He said, we just going praying for little black boys, man, because they under attack. I mm -hmm. said, y'all doing it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Y'all getting paid for this? They said, no. Nah. <laughs> we just we, we, we just praying mm -hmm. for little black boys. Yeah. They said they prayed to, for 31 Households mm -hmm. or nigga at case apartments yes. in soda bag. Yes. So that's the kind of stuff that we got to do. Mm -hmm. yes. That's the kind of stuff thinking outside of the box, yes. thinking mm -hmm. inside of a circle, you know, being not just in something but into it. Right. See, so wow. we in is involvement, yes. into it is commitment. Yes. yes. So we need to be into it. And into it, I can't say I'm into it, but I'm not willing to sit down with my brother and my sister. All right. And you know, the beautiful thing about it, and thanks to uh, Flo here. That induct or put me for the African cold mm -hmm. The thing that's important, I think, I don't know if they missed what you were saying. I hope they did not. How your mother embraced Jehovah Witness, whoever, because I've learned with the elders and with the nation builders, it's not about a denominational mm -hmm. type of thing. And sometimes those are the things that build up walls mm -hmm. from us achieving the success we say we want. Mm -hmm. Speaking of which, I would like to mm -hmm. mention this because that's one of the things I really like about these three organizations. Uh -huh. And yes, congratulations on your induction. Yes. We're happy to have you, yes, Bishop Norton, are. into the Wisdom. Elders Council of Dayton. Thank you. But one of the things I like, yes. I realize this is a Christian show, yes. but we work together cohesively mm -hmm. in addition to Christians, uh -huh. it's Muslims, Mm -hmm. I like working with Stephen Mohammed. Mm -hmm. He is an avid worker, as mm -hmm. Marlon says. A meaning na, am I pronouncing mm -hmm. it correctly? Yeah, minula. Excuse mm -hmm. me. Anyway, he's, mm -hmm. he's been out due to surgery, but I, I like working. I'm an Israelite. Uh -huh. I'm a proud Israelite. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. okay. But I like working with everybody yes. cohesively. Mm -hmm. yes. And I want that to be brought mm -hmm. out. Yes. And, and it's bigger than us. I, if people ask me, they say, well, 
why, why do you keep this energy, you know, because it's greater <laughs> than us. And then I go deep. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I go deep. Yeah. I ain't no preacher, but I'm going deep. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Greater is he in me than he's mm-hmm. in the one world. Yeah. And, and, and so you take that attitude and you know that you are responsible for expanding the circle. Uh-huh. So when you grow to your crown, yes. the reason I'm going to my crown so I can grow others. Mm-hmm. And so mm-hmm. I take that responsibility when I work with these young men. I've literally graduated mm-hmm. from rites of passing. 18,000 young boys. Mm-hmm. These ain't made up numbers. I got 302 spiritual Statistics. sons. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Over 280 have graduated from college. Mm-hmm. It's not me. I'm standing God. in need of prayer. <laughs> <laughs> not my mom, not my daddy, but it's me. Oh, Lord. <laughs> St- oh, I need it every day and every hour because I'm no way perfect. Because practice don't make perfect. Practice make uh, improvement. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We're in perfect mm-hmm. beings serving the perfect God. Yeah. So, so my success has been mm-hmm. that, you know, that I, I'm leaving it all out there for them. Yeah. Because like the ancestors did us. Mm-hmm. I have a responsibility as a nation builder to pass a lit torch yes. mm-hmm. to the warriors. Yes. Not that artificial torch that blink on and out in that artificial light they yes. got. I mean, a lit torch. Yes. That's my responsibility. Yes. Mm-hmm. I have to pass a lit torch yes. because I'm expecting them not to run and catch up with me, but I'm expecting them to do what? Run pass. what? Pass. Yes. Pass. Yes. And so that takes work. Mm -hmm. That takes commitment. Mm -hmm. That takes having integrity. Mm -hmm. That takes having boldness. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I wish I just go and just do all the other stuff other guys do. (laughs) Go to the club, hang out, (laughs) chill. Make no. 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 Marlon is a perfect example (laughs) of Kuji Chakalia's self determination. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Nothing stops him. To me, he's the energizer. Well, we talk about that a lot. Energizer is a battery pack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 where's the battery pack? Yeah. 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 But, but, it, yeah. but, but, Bishop, but it's so important mm-hmm. not just to be a role model. Uh, I'm over the group street soldiers, which are ex fellows mm-hmm. go back in the community mm-hmm. to make a difference. Mm-hmm. We, uh, our motto is victory over the streets. Mm-hmm. But we're not role models, we're soul models. Mm-hmm. A role model, what he models mm-hmm. a role. Uh-huh. That's what he does. A soul model models his soul. And speaking of which, I'd like to give another shout out to Marlon because I'm also involved with the Survivors and Caregivers United. Mm -hmm. I would like to say I truly miss Pastor Robert Jones because he was a very effective communicator, especially with the preachers in going to his service when he crossed over. It was brought out that Pastor Jones was known when they would have their pastoral council. Yes. He would be a mediator right. and he is missed. Yes. But in addition, I want to bring out our survivors and caregivers united. Yes. We started our own cancer group because we felt there was a void and it was Pastor Jones that said, don't, live out, don't leave out the caregivers particularly mm. talking about his wife. Yes. His wife was a soldier to the very end yes. in, in making sure he was as comfortable as could be. But our survivors and caregivers, by the grace of God, we have had three fashion shows, God willing, we will have our fourth one in October. But not only are we breast cancer survivors, but thanks to the late Pastor Jones and others, it's a conglomeration of all cancer survivors. Wow. Okay. And we're growing. Wow. And I wow. want to give a shout out to Kettering Health Network. Mm-hmm. I'm proud to be a member of them. Now I'm receiving free exercise classes. You hear me? Free. <laughs> State of the art. <laughs> through the Maple Tree. The Maple Tree Alliance. Yes. I go every Friday and they will work with cancer survivors at all levels. You don't just have to be in remission. You can be in the middle of treatment, yes. but you are free to use this program to help you physically and mentally. Yes. And it is directly across the street from Kettering Hospital. If you want more information, reach out and call me. Mm-hmm. All right, beautiful. Mm-hmm. And I don't want to leave out too. Dr. Johnson is a fashion consultant. Mm-hmm. Oh. And if you ever look at you know, uh, uh, the Culture Fest, <laughs> She have a whole line of yes, African clothes and yes, jewelry. I was in a rush to death to put my necklace <laughs> yeah. on. Yeah, and, and, yeah, yeah. But I'm honored <laughs> that he selected his daishiki for me 
and this was hand designed in the country of Ghana in the continent of Africa. All right. Oh, praise God. And I buy all kind of stuff. Oh, he done. Oh, can he. I, can I get some of my he money took back? These, he took these off of my wall. Can I get some of these my money? These three Nigerian carvings weren't for yes. sale, okay? Yes. I came yeah. upstairs. He had them on the table. I I, I want these. Let me tell you something about that. So um, <laughs> I decided to go back to school to get a degree in African studies. And I just I just did it because my, my little brother went and got his Ph.D. in theology. He said, you go back to school, you know, we'll get it paid for. And I'll go back to school with you because I want to get another degree. I said, oh, OK, so we're back in school. So one of the most brilliant men I ever met is my professor from Nigeria. Mm -hmm. So he, he came over. He has four Ph.D.s. Right. Whoa. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he's a IQ 140. Okay. All right. Nigerian. Every, anything happens in Nigeria, he, oh, Nigeria! <laughs> We're the smartest. I mean, <laughs> I'm bringing another part of him out. Because you know what? He must always articulate. I'm saying, man, you've got to have some fun. <laughs> right? And, you know, and so he just like opened up and he, he just, I mean, we're a blessing to each other. Yes. But as an elder, he's more of a blessing to me because he believes in me. He even had 106 undocumented papers. Uh -huh. But I told him undocumented. I said, they're not documented because you ain't put them out. Okay. And that 106 scholarly papers. Yeah. I got him to, he's going to release all of them in a couple of weeks. But here's what's my point. I said all that uh -huh. and to set y'all up. Right? <laughs> he came in and saw them. Uh -huh. He started crying. Really? The short man started crying. A little, little bit like Imhotep. I said, are you Imhotep? <laughs> he started crying. Yes. Because that was his culture. Yeah. And he said, when Nigerian students come over here, he said, you make me laugh. And he said, when Nigerian students come over here, we're on a mission, not an omission. All right now. He said, when we come here, we're coming to learn all that we can so we can take it back to Mother Africa. Mm -hmm. I said, huh? He said, yeah. He said, we don't come just to play. We don't want to just play basketball. Uh -huh. We want to own the entire industry. Okay. And he's and you know he's got one of his PhDs in African studies. He knows so much. I just said my head hurt. Can you stop talking to me? I mean, he can break it down levels yes. by levels. Yes. And and one of the things that I showed him, he didn't want to share that with the world. Mm -hmm. I said, how do you have four PhDs? Uh -huh. wow. You got a PhD in African studies. Uh -huh. You're a psychiatrist. Uh -huh. Y'all see the flexibility? Mm -hmm. You got a degree in sociology. I'm like, yeah, how you? <laughs> in business, yeah. you got PhD. Yeah. I said, another young man, whether they're African or African American. Uh -huh. I'm African. I live in America. Yeah, I'm African American. I can accept that. I ain't gonna fight that. Uh -huh. But he's. I said they need to know that it's what possible. Yeah. That that we have to become possibility thinkers. Mm -hmm. You know, one of the things that I, I did that I'm most excited about is. I worked with 13 young men f five years ago, and all of them went to Morehouse. Mm. Uh, 2020, 11 graduated. Mm -hmm. And the two that's not, we stayed on top of them, and one of them gonna come out of Central State, one of them I, I think is gonna come out of Ohio University. And mm. one of the things that I shared with them, mm. now it's your responsibility. It, did I help? I was a mentor for y'all mm. these, these four or five years, really five years. Yes. What are you going to do? Yeah. And so I tell them that a challenge is not a choco, it's just a challenge. Yeah. It's just a challenge. Oh, okay. Yeah. Ain't like a choco, it's just a challenge. Just a challenge. I don't <laughs> see you falling out dying. It's just a challenge. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. you got to learn how to pull the hands off you. Yeah. You know, and I, and, I, and, I, and, I, and I tell them the strength is here up. Yeah. So if we want to become masters of our destiny, mm -hmm. if we want to live by my yacht, which is truth, justice, and, and righteousness, mm -hmm. right? If we want to do that, then we have to carry the torch. Yeah. And you know, beautiful thing, I was listening to you talk, and a lot of times, some of our younger generation don't realize Japanese, we say they die hard learners, thinkers. We even do a hard car, kill themselves, they can't get a certain grade. We hear about the Germans being super, super study and contribute so much to the world. But there's so much from African, yeah. mm -hmm. and a lot of times we might be African students, I know this, in America, but they've already studied in England, mm -hmm. they've studied in other continents, 
before it even come to America, mm -hmm. but they are getting a full mm -hmm. spectrum of mm -hmm. the education from a various countries. Mm -hmm. In fact, like you said, sometimes I, Europe, I felt small because a lot of those men and women spoke two, three, and four oh, languages. languages. Oh, easy. Mm -hmm. He's, oh, oh, yeah, yeah. Multi. And, and African students, it, maybe it's changed, but they were the number one students in America. When African students, I think their graduation rate was like, from college was something like 97%. But that's why my professor from Nigeria was telling me, he said, when they come, you know, there's accountability. We, mm -hmm. we are holding them mm -hmm. accountable, mm -hmm. right? Yes. So you're right. I, okay, I got a, a spiritual son, not calling my spiritual son, mm -hmm. DJ. DJ is the ambassador for the Congo. Mm -hmm. DJ was a refugee for 20 years, and he's only 32. Mm -hmm. And so he's the ambassador. He's a good one to get on the show. He's them because he's a Christian. Yes. He's, he was the ambassador from Ohio, Indiana and Michigan and he's 32 years old. Mm. He can speak, he understands 11 languages and he can speak seven and he's from the Congo. Okay. So what, I, what I'm saying, you've okay. got a lot of brilliant Africans around here uh -huh. and they have, the, it's mission for them. Yeah. It's, it's mission and yeah. I, that's what we got to get because we got that. I mean, we got yeah. their bloodline, yeah. but we got to become believers. We got to become possibility thinkers. We got to quit taking everything so serious. Yeah. Right. You know, one of my jokes is with the kid is kids is I'm not here for fun, fun. Mm -hmm. I'm sure now that you can tell I'm like you for serious, serious, <laughs> yeah. but I'm here for serious fun. Yes. I'm serious and we're going to have fun. Yes. You know, one of my favorite jobs now I work for the office for the males of color. I love my boss, Dr. Worley, because he listens. Yes. He don't act like he know everything. He listens yes. and he has a love for this. And one of the things I care with him is that God put us together yes. because it, all of these young men in Dayton mm -hmm. public, mm -hmm. I mean, they need somebody to believe in. Yes. They need heroes yes. even before they see superheroes. Yes. Oh, yes. Heroes are men who look like us. That's what I love about the Council of Elders. Boom, yes. boom. They need to see sheroes. Yes. They yeah. need to see that if they're going to be great. They yeah. cannot be great if yeah. they don't see great. I, you know, I'm a faith person. Yes. Feel as if the thing has happened. Yes. I live by faith thinking and not fear thinking. Yes. Faith over fear. But I also mm -hmm. understand some of our kids need to see it. Yes. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, well, until, yeah. until we get them to that level yes. where they can have faith, yes. sometimes they have to see it. Yes. That's why yes. another reason Kwanzaa and the cultural festival are so important. Yes. Because Kwanzaa is to be celebrated 365 Six. days a year, mm -hmm. not just the last seven days mm -hmm. of December. Mm -hmm. yes. And a excellent example of us embracing Kwanzaa is the cultural festival. Okay. As Marlon said, he said, oh, we're going out even bigger this year. <laughs> mm -hmm. and, you know, it was mm -hmm. such a void yes. last summer for me. Yes. We couldn't have it due to Corona. Yes. But if Mr. President, Mr. Marlin has anything to do with <laughs> it, we gonna that. make up for lost time that's this right. summer. And that's one of the things yeah. I especially mm -hmm. enjoy, working with the youth. Yes. Uh, I've had the youth fashion show in the African village, which Mama Nazipo is the head honcho <laughs> of the African <laughs> village. Yes, she tells I've me what to do. And <laughs> I'm the president, she tells <laughs> me what to do. What kind of president am I? I have no power. <laughs> Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but see, yeah. we appreciate you inviting us out mm -hmm. today yeah. because there's probably a lot of people that don't even know enough about us. Yes. I'm proud of my cancer group. We're doing things. Uh, la the last time we had it, we had jackets okay. that I ordered. Our jackets had the pink symbol on them. Okay. On the back of it, it says, nothing like a sister. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, this past Sunday, I reached out to one of my Breast cancer survivor, she had to have another surgery, mm -hmm. but she was so surprised when I came by there to give her a gift package, just because yes. I don't want to get sidetracked on cancer, but it, it I'm alive for a reason, yes. oh, and yes. I want to spread the word, yes. there is hope at the end of the tunnel, yes. so, and God willing, we're going to have the best festival of ever <laughs> this year, thanks to Mr. President mm -hmm. yeah. and others. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> others, because it, it, it's definitely the team, because they get on yeah. my nerves and my, 
reserve nerve, especially my niece Ashley. Ash. Y'all know Ashley talks to her. I can get older because of her. No, but my niece, my niece is just committed, and me and my brother Tommy Owens um, Jr. We're so proud of her. And for mm-hmm. people know, you you heard me say that Guza Saba. That's mm-hmm. just the principles of Kwanzaa. Mm-hmm. And Guza Saba is the Black Value System, mm-hmm. which is Umoja, Kuji, Chakali, Ujima, Ujima, mm-hmm. Nia, Kaumba, and Amani. Yes. Unity, self determination, collective work and responsibility, mm-hmm. cooperative economics, mm-hmm. purpose, creativity, and faith. Mm-hmm. And there's a new one that was added by my mentor, mm-hmm. uh, Paul Hill. Uh, mm-hmm. Paul Hill lives in. In Cleveland, they added one which is called Hashima. Okay. Hashima means respect. So you mm, respect the seven principles mm-hmm. 365 mm-hmm. days a year. Mm-hmm. And we don't just do seven Harambe's, mm-hmm. we do eight Harambe's because <laughs> the eighth says we're going to respect the seven. Respect. Mm-hmm. And that is As a something. matter of fact, to piggyback from that, uh-huh. you were among them, Bishop. Yes. Uh, this group of movers and shakers. Yes. But the Gym City Market is oh, about yes. to open mm-hmm. at yes. the end of of uh, the tour. Okay. I saw y'all yes. out there giving shout outs for that Harambe. Was awesome. yes. Come yes. together. Yes. Come together. Come yes. together. Come yes. together. Yes. yes. And Bishop, I teach young people that. Oh, yeah. Harambe, pull mm-hmm. together. And yes. I tell them seven Harambe's mean the seven principles. Yes. The mm-hmm. eighth Harambe mean eight principles. We saying it so that we go. Harambe Umoja, mm-hmm. unity. That's yeah. how we do it. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. You know, mm-hmm. so yes. we give we give those seven or at, at, at times those eight Harambe's because Harambe means pull together. Yeah. It means the community pull together. Mm-hmm. Why are we pulling together? We're yes. pulling together Better to life. create the circle. Yes. And then as a Christian, yeah. I go another level. You know, me and my, my little brother, Amaha, <laughs> we talk about oh, yeah. globally yeah. that yes. the biggest circle is globally. Mm-hmm. Yes. Human yes. humanity. Yes. Yes. U H U E color humanity, yes. humanity, yes. all the people. Oh, God. And I love that eight one because respect is something mm-hmm. we have lost mm-hmm. as and a whole. And it's critical. Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, not to get sidetracked, mm-hmm. but I hate to admit it, but we still have gang wars going yes. on, mm-hmm. yes, and yes. we got. Yes. Mm-hmm. We got to get yeah. Mm-hmm. Divide and conquer. This is not about that. Yeah. It's about pulling together. Pulling together. Yes. It's about emoji. Yes. It's about unity. It's about Kuji Chakalia, mm-hmm. self determination. It's about Kumba. Mm-hmm. Kumba's this is my Kumba okay. making my creations. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yes. And this is healing for me. Mm-hmm. Yes. But we've got to continue mm-hmm. working as a team. Yes. Teamwork mm-hmm. makes the dream mm-hmm. work. In in yes. a Shima respect. Paul Hill in Cleveland, it was the young people said, well, we disrespect each other all the time. Then they said, well, respect. Mm-hmm. So they called Milana Karinga. He gave mm-hmm. them the OK. Mm-hmm. They came up with the eight principles. Okay. So okay. it was young people initiated mm-hmm. that. Okay. So yes. it's just so important. Like she said, we've got to pull together. Yes. And, and you can't pull together during the day. Mm-hmm. Right. Okay. Right. You know, you pull together. We're together today. <laughs> 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 what kind of, you know, my, my niece used to say, um, don't be a plastic Christian. Mm. <laughs> I had to think about it. She talking mm. about me. Mm. <laughs> All right. A plastic. We don't need to be plastic right. when we do this work. We're no limit soldiers for Christ. Mm. Right? Mm. And as a disciple, yeah. as a disciple for him, mm. we have to leave it all out there for these young people, especially us who are elders and nation builders. Yeah. I'm already thinking about, as an elder, some of the things that I'm going to do different. Okay. I'm already thinking about it. I'm already thinking right. because I need to do it better. Yes. I need to. I have a responsibility to do it better. Yes. Why be an elder if I'm going to do the same thing y'all doing? I mean, <laughs> right. nothing against what y'all doing, yeah. but I mean, I mean, because yeah. you know, because mm-hmm. people say, yeah, when they cut Martin's head, cut Megger's head, and uh, cut Malcolm's head. We stop. We can't afford to, to stop. stop. Yeah. So Black Lives Matter was the new civil rights. Okay. Right? Yeah. We had civil rights, then we got Black Lives Matter. Mm-hmm. And so Black Lives Matter, regardless of what people said, mm-hmm. they had a big impact because the mm-hmm. world came together uh-huh. under Black Lives Matter. They even talked about maybe giving them a Nobel Peace Prize. Mm-hmm. So, so that's moving forward. That's yeah. moving past civil rights. Okay. Understanding civil rights, we got a few minutes. Understanding civil rights, uh-huh. the Sankofa bird in Ghana, that's a bird that's flying forward, yeah. looking backwards with an egg in his mouth that represents the future. Yeah. So the Sankofa bird says, you know, I draw from the present, 
I'm going to draw from the past, live in the present, work for the future. All right. We have to be like that single bird. <laughs> okay. We got to keep, we pulling them, but we moving forward. We cannot be stagnant uh -huh. if we want real revolution. Right. And the greatest revolution starts in your mind. Yes, yes. And you know, it's a beautiful thing you say, and I know we're getting to the end. I was thinking during the show, and I said, well, when you're talking about the small and the greatness, I'm told if you put a fish in a fish bowl, he will remain small. If you put him in a larger river or lake, he has the potential of getting larger. Mm. The same thing with the plant. Mm -hmm. If you keep a plant in a small container, it has no room to grow. Mm. And I tell you, it's just so much, just a sketch, just barely scratching the subject of what we're talking about today. Hopefully we can have some of the other ones guests. Mm -hmm. you're referring to later on. I welcome this thing because the community needs to know. Mm -hmm. They might be in what you call it, the, the corona thing, but now you can stand at home and listen. Mm -hmm. You can hear. Those that watch us on YouTube, they get to hear another mm -hmm. insight for what we're talking about. I hope we have many more. And I keep looking at Dr. Johnson here and her pink mutt cloth. Mm -hmm. I had never seen pink mutt oh, cloth. Yeah, she, yeah. She's a traveler. She, she goes. <laughs> she she rocks. Rocks. Since you brought it up. <laughs> I was fortunate enough, I don't know who had more fun. Winif excuse me, Dr. Winifred Johnson is a history professor at Bethune-Cookman University. Okay. And I had the pleasure of visiting her last February. I went crazy. They had African vendors down there selling mud cloth by the ton. <laughs> and oh man, this is a healing material. When I was fighting cancer, I lost my hair. I used to wear a mud cloth hat a lot. I w I'm not a wig person. Mm -hmm. I preferred a mud cloth hat. Healing mud cloth, authentic mud cloth, comes from the country of Mali in northern Africa. Okay. And this is authentic, and I have on my fringes to show that I'm an Israelite, but I have mud cloth all over my house, and I totally believe and in you its are. healing <laughs> powers. Can, can you all give me 30 <laughs> seconds? 30 seconds. Or tell him how to get in touch with him. Oh, okay. oh. oh, we go. Marley Shackleford, 937-475-2707. Peace Ambassadors Dayton at gmail.com. All right. Floyd Johnson, 937-580-0044. Or Floyd Johnson at yahoo.com. And if you want to hear more of this from our community and our community outreach, stay tuned. Call the numbers they give you. And we'll try to have some more of this coming your way. God bless you. May heaven smile on you. Keep it simple.